the first critique was that they increase social grants. And I know this is interesting to a lot of people because it's our tax money, right? People are very concerned about increasing grants in general. Like you'll see that the, the public perception about grants is actually flawed and we won't get into that debate because I get very heated about this because I don't think grants are charity and most people think of it that way. Okay, let's just pause, pause on that because I want to explore that. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, uh, because, and the way this is coming from is when you look at countries like Kenya where there's actually no so social grants, uh, obviously there's different theories around it in terms of if you don't have grants then the citizens of the country are forced to be entrepreneurial, right? not so sure of the situation in Nigeria. But then when you come to SA and other countries, it becomes almost like a crutch, and it makes the simple argument is just about people being lazy. It does not incentivize people to go out and look for work. So what is the public perception of grants, number one? And why did you critique the increase in social grants? Well, we didn't. Criti- we, criti- we critiqued... Okay, let me start okay. there. We critiqued that it wasn't enough. Uh-huh. Um, and that it was punitive to women. And the reason why we argued that it was punitive to women is because you know how the child grants increased, ne? Mm-hmm. First of all, we thought it would be 500 rand per kid, which is not what happened. It was 500 rand per caregiver. So if you've got five kids, you're only getting 100 rand, rand per, per kid. But okay. if you've got one kid, you're getting you're the full 500, okay. right? But then also, if you are the caregiver, you actually can't apply for the unemployment grant. Shit. But you're not the language. recipient of the child grant. Do you see where the problem is? So Busi, as an individual or mother, is not the recipient of the child grant. My child is the recipient of the child grant, right? Mm-hmm. And so now I'm being excluded from the unemployment grant because I have a child. And as we know, most women are the caregivers. Mm. So it, it disproportionately affected women. So we said it is punitive to women to exclude them from this unemployment grant by saying that if you are already a recipient of a grant, you can't apply for it. Right, okay, so that right. was the first thing. The other thing is that um, the 350, I mean, personally in my institute, we said there should just be a universal basic income grant. That would have been the easiest way to, to implement this. Mm. And I think SASA, the way they've gone about it was obvious <laughs> that it's easier to just give money ev- to everyone than to say, if you are blue and this mm, and mm. that, now you've got all this criteria. Mm. Now you are, um, I think 80% of people who were denied were actually falsely denied in terms of the UIF criteria because they actually didn't do it correctly. And so all these people were rejected the falsely, right? Mm. So we were like, look, if you just give everyone money, guys, which is what America is doing, a $1,200 check to everybody, right? Uh, when you say everybody, you mean everyone who's unemployed? Um, no, everybody. Like me earning $100,000 per... Everybody. That's America. what a universal stimulus is, right? Like you need, you, you, you know, the best stimulus packages are ones that go early, go house, go early, go hard, go household. And that means give money to people. That's what the go household part means. Give money to people so that people can spend in the economy to revive it. So we're going to come back to your critique of the budget now. Mm-hmm. Which is, you can see it. Me, I have many, go down many <laughs> I know, rabbit holes I but there's so many here. interesting conversations. I get it. So, Okay. This universal basic income is mm. obviously a debate that's going around in economic circles, yep. etc. Right? Um, is there any? Because this is this theory, or has there been practical evidence to show that it actually helps the citizens of the country, does not stagnate economic growth, and actually encourages uh, competition, um, innovation, technology, etc., etc. Yeah. First of all, we, there's great studies in South Africa about the grants, the existing grants. Okay. <clears throat> what the studies show is that grant recipients have a higher marginal propensity to spend, and that means that they just spend the money that they get, right? Okay. But they've also got a higher marginal propensity to spend on the domestic economy. The higher up you go income, the more people import, mm. the more people don't spend on the local economy, yeah. and the more people spend on the financial economy. So not the real economy. They're not spending the one rand that's going to pay for a farmer mm. in case they invest. They're, they're investing in... In some instruments in the that they don't even understand themselves. Yes, there. yes. So mm. the, the thing is, in terms of boosting domestic demand, which South Africa is, has very low domestic demand, is that you need to give people money to spend to build that domestic demand. So those people, because they spend on the domestic economy, they play a big role in actually maintaining demand in the domestic economy. And I think 
you know what is always interesting to me is that the the basic income grant argument is not new the first time they had it was in the early 2000s 2003 there was a taylor report that basically said if you give every south african 100 rand you'd reduce poverty by 76 percent 100 rand guys remember this is 2003 if government had given every single person 100 rand mm. we would have reduced poverty significantly sure right we are now in 2020 55 percent of the population of south africa lives below the upper bound poverty line of 1200 or below 1227 mm. rand mm. a month so 55 percent of our population lives below 1,300 rand. So do you see it? So you, to build the economy, right, you need to spend in it. You, and, and that's why I'm opposed to what government is proposing, which is to say, if you make the conditions right, then business will invest, and then mm. somehow the economy fixes itself along sure. the way. That's not how it works. Um, and of course, basic universal basic income grants have been implemented in different places and considered in different places. And it's not just... It's about the full package. Some countries don't give a universal basic income grant, mm -hmm. but they give free health, free education, all of these at a very um, good quality such that you actually don't need a basic income grant in that nature. So if we had all these other things, maybe we wouldn't need a basic income grant. Mm. If everyone had the right to food in the way that they should, maybe mm. we wouldn't need a basic income grant, right? Okay, so we'll come back to the budget. Mm -hmm. The one question which I don't want to run away from was the public perception on, on grants. What is that? Is it is it a negative? I'd assume it is, right? Yeah. What is the perception and why are you against that? Okay. So <laughs> there's so many layers to this. So the first the bad per public perception is that people have children for grants. And I think there's like so many studies that disprove this mm. continuously over and over and over again. There are people who spend so much money researching this, guys. They mm. interview people. They find out why people have children. They, all these things. Mm. And then they disprove this over and over again. But this argument, I think why it's really bad is because, let's say, old men in power mm -hmm. reproduce the stigma, right? So when you hear the argument for let's increase the child grant, you hear people say, yeah, but people have children for a grant. Mm. Um, and nobody thinks about... The, the child grant is below the food poverty line. It's literally it's below what you need to survive as a human being in South Africa on a daily, like on a monthly basis mm. for basic nutrition. It's not even that much. <laughs> it's 445 rand. Mm. Okay. <laughs>